gonna take over the wrestling world I'm the champion of the ring Got the moves and the mic Gonna show them how to break my people, what is good? Um, feels great to be back with YouTube, and I don't really want to get into a long explanation of what's been going on, what I've been doing, uh, why I'm back, all that stuff. That'll come at a later time. I just kind of got to vent and talk about Double or Nothing and kind of the feedback that's been going on and what I think it actually is leading to, because I think it's bigger than just... Uh, a negative pay-per-view vibe or anything like that. I think that this is a crucial time for AEW, and I definitely want to talk about it. So um, one thing that I've been picking up on that I think is just really bizarre is you're getting a lot of people that are being like, this pay-per-view was a disaster. Uh, this pay-per-view is the worst pay-per-view in the history of wrestling. This pay-per-view is an embarrassment to pro wrestling. Uh, this is TNA, Vince Russo, Riffic, all this stuff. And then they'll be like, but the main event and the co-main event were like matches of the year. Huh? Like, how can you have both that way? Like, how can you have match of the year candidates, but also have the worst pay-per-view in the history of wrestling. So I feel like there's, it's a crucial time for AEW, right? Like there's no secret. There's a lot going on with collision coming up, um, forbidden door, all in ticket sales, all this stuff. Right. So I just feel like that there's a vibe of AEW and they're not in the, honeymoon phase anymore the cm punk drama the elite drama with cm punk like all that stuff has led to kind of where we are now um and it's not just that it's it, there's so much other stuff guys not being used on rosters um so many different titles tony owning roh and incorporating that into AEW. um there's just so many different things that when you look at it, it's it's almost like Tony has built an empire and the empire needs more TV, right? And the thing is, is if you're a hater of this company, the idea of Tony Khan building an empire is a total nightmare for you. Like, that's the last thing that you wanted to see. And right now you're seeing some struggles and then you're also seeing like major triumphs and so it's a weird time right now in AEW and I just feel like that if there's ever going to be bad moments these haters are coming out in full force to really try to kick them while they're down because they know the potential like we weren't supposed to have a major pro wrestling company ever be remotely competitive with the WWE and here we are and it is something that and when I say compete I mean like 66,000 tickets in the UK for All In without a match even being announced. Like, that is crazy. And you just can't crap on a company when they deliver something like that. So, I think in retrospect, a lot of things are, are happening with AEW. And this is a pivotal time for AEW. And the haters know it. And so, with this pay-per-view, it was their chance to really try to crap all over AEW. And I just don't think that that is the case. Um, I definitely think that this pay-per-view had some misses. No doubt about it. It had some misses. And uh, we're going to talk about it. But, man, it has some really good hits, too. And, you know, everybody would be like, well, you're an AEW shill. And on maybe not. Maybe so. I love AEW, but I definitely am not a shill for it. Like, I'll call it out if I think it's bad right? But do I favor AEW over WWE? Absolutely. Um, and that's no secret. Has WWE been producing some really good stuff lately? Yes. But the thing that is the difference, in my opinion, with AEW and WWE, the biggest difference is you both want to see the their premium live events, right? Like at the end of the day, you want to see the pay-per-view, you want to see the premium live event for WWE. But the weekly television... I could absolutely care less about Raw and SmackDown. I just don't watch any of their weekly stuff. There's nothing that excites me. AEW Dynamite has a vibe of a pay-per-view every week. I'm excited for the show every week. So it's a huge difference when it comes to the anticipation of the product and what I look forward to. Now, am I somewhat worried about with Collision coming in? Will that sacrifice a lot of that? It might. And that definitely concerns me. So... Like I said, we're in an interesting time. Um, 
and it, and you know, even when me and Bill were doing videos, like we never liked the brand split. Like we hated the idea. And with AEW doing a brand split, you know, or the rumor brand split, the split the transfer portal or whatever um, with Collision, you know, I I don't know where that's all going to lead. But I will say that it's probably needed at this point. Um, There's just so many great wrestlers that aren't getting an opportunity, that aren't getting TV time. And I think that it's pretty crucial at this point that there is another platform for them. So... I'm extremely excited about Collision. I mean, the fact that we could get like match of the year candidates on on a Wednesday and on a Saturday and then pay-per-view, like it, it's just a, an exciting time for AEW. So so anyways, let's just jump into Double or Nothing. Um, I thought the Battle Royal was really good. I think Orange Cassidy's whole reign, his title reign has been really good, um, really earned his worth, right? It shows that... He's not just this comedy wrestler, um, experienced guy that nobody really knew about. And, you know, with the right gimmick, now he's super over, merchandise seller, a big part of AEW. And the guy just keeps going out there and killing it. And I love the transitions that him and Swerve had in the finals. Um, I thought it was a really good match. And uh, the finish was perfect for Orange, right? Just like the lazy kick to finish him off. And uh, so, yeah, maybe we might see a Swerve and Orange Cassidy uh, type feud later on down the road once Swerve's done with Keith Lee. But man, and I think this really hurt the pay-per-view in general is the Chris Jericho match. The Chris Jericho-Adam Cole match, uh, it just, it, I wasn't feeling it, man. And I was really, I really enjoyed the build-up to the match. I thought that... Um, the whole Britt Britt Baker thing and like the whole Adam Cole's enraged and always trying to attack Jericho and then bringing in Roderick Strong and then like tricking him outside of the building and Adam Cole keeps attacking him and they have like legal documents to keep away from each other and Jericho's willing to tear those up because he hates Adam Cole that much too at this point. They're both willing to fight and then they brought in Sabu uh, for the the week of the pay-per-view and it just was such a bad idea like Sabu had nothing to do with this he's old you know that he like could barely walk a few years ago and there was a go go fund me for his hospital payments like there's just nothing exciting about bringing in Sabu um, it made really no sense just because it's like they're so mad at each other that we have to bring out you know a psycho like Sabu but he's supposed to be the special enforcer, but basically he just became like a tag team opponent or a tag team partner for Adam Cole and Roderick Strong. And it, it just came across weird. Like it's just a big brawl with the Jericho Appreciation Society versus Sabu and Roderick Strong and Adam Cole. And like that's not what this match was supposed to be. This match was supposed to be Adam Cole and Chris Jericho. And that's really all it was supposed to be. And it just got goofy, and the crowd wasn't feeling it. They were dead for most of the match. Um, it really hurt the match because even in the finish, you know, Adam Cole's pummeling Jericho, and the crowd could care less. And like when they stopped the match, it's just kind of like okay. And I, I, I just think that you know, you try to be creative, you try to do different things, and this just it didn't work. It just didn't work. So I think that it really hurt the pay-per-view in general because it was a huge match and it just didn't deliver and then like I felt like it kind of lost the crowd for a while I thought the crowd in Vegas was pretty bad in the first place there were parts of the at the battle royal where like the crowd should be popping and they didn't pop at all and I was like "Uh uh-oh and then like what really hit me is like when they basically didn't sing along very well with Judas I was like oh man this is going to be a, a rough night and I remember one time where the crowd really affected the show for me was Full Gear. I think it was 20, could have been 2019. It's whenever Kenny Omega faced Moxley in Baltimore. And I just felt like the crowd was awful that night. And so I felt that same type of vibe. So I was really worried because I, I'd heard that like AEW had only sold like 7,000 tickets, but then like come showtime, they had almost 11,000 people in the building. And I guess, man, just that hardcore fan base just wasn't there to that night. And, uh, you know, I'm sure certain ones were, but they just weren't vocal enough, and it really hurt the show. 
We had the tag team match, and uh, that was fine. Um, I think that Jeff Jarrett is a heat-seeking missile. Like, that guy just loves to find heat. Um, I think he's done a really good job since coming into AEW with Jay Lethal. And it's funny because, like, that tag team was basically formed because of Ric Flair's last match. And I remember in the buildup, like, man, like, this is really good, and, and they're doing really good together. And I just never would have thought that they would be together in AEW, but it's worked out really well. Um, FTR ends up winning this match and, and throwing in Mark Briscoe in it too, which, you know, I'm all for, I'm glad Mark Briscoe has something to do. And, uh, yeah, it worked for me. It, it, it definitely picked up towards the end. The crowd got into it and, uh, it became a pretty fun match. So props to FTR, still the tag team champs. I would like to see them face somebody that's, uh, much more athletic, much more of a top tier team in the future, but uh, we'll see what happens there. We had the Wardlow and Christian Cage uh, match for the latter match. I thought this match was pretty good. I thought this is exactly what Wardlow needed. Uh, Wardlow was able to showcase his athleticism, showcase that he's a badass. Uh, he did a freaking swanton bomb off a painter's ladder through a table on Luchasaurus, and he came across looking like a million bucks. He needed this, and I think it worked out for him. I'll say the only thing that was bizarre was watching Arn Anderson bite Luchasaurus's thumb off. Like, that just looked so cheesy, and he had blood all out of his mouth, and he just kind of looked like an old vampire. And that that was, that was, if you would say anything was like Russo Rific to me, that, that spot was, was kind of Russo Rific, honestly. I believe after this was the Tony Storm and Jamie Hayter match, and I just, uh, the, the booking of this was kind of bizarre. If, if you could go back and do it all over again, I think what you'd want to do is have this exact same match, but just do it on a dynamite. If Hader can't, can't wrestle, uh, I wouldn't build this thing all the way to a pay-per-view because people are anticipating an actual good match because they had like one of the best... I think, they, in my opinion, they did have the best female match of last year. Um, and it was a really great match. They're both awesome wrestlers, so I was definitely looking forward to a rematch. And, and this was just basically just a beat down by a freaking wrestling faction outcast and it was totally unfair and it was just to make Jamie Hayter look like she had no chance and so she was forced to lose. Um, I get why they did it and I, I totally disagree with the people that say that she should just relinquish the belt because I feel like if with having Thunder Rosa do that and then you have Jamie Hayter do that, it just feels like it, it, it puts a bad stigma on AEW that you've had two women just relinquish the belt without actually losing the title. And then what are you going to do another tournament and all that stuff? Like I just, I think that having hater go through with it and lose is okay. I just don't think this should have been done on pay-per-view. I think it should have been done on dynamite. Um, but I do like the idea that Tony storm is the champ. I think Tony storm's an awesome wrestler. I think she'll do great. And uh, I'm, I'm all for it. And hopefully Hater can come back for All In in the UK and maybe get revenge on Tony Storm there and get her title back. I think that would be a pretty cool moment. House of Black versus The Acclaim. I mean, The Acclaim's super over. And I just I just don't understand why you couldn't just advertise this. Why this need to be an open challenge? The Acclaim was kind of building towards a trios match. And I felt like that this should have just been done like – advertised build up everyone's expecting it and see what happens um i'm not a big fan of the whole lights looking like a they're fighting in like a disco outer space look or something but overall house of black wins not sure if the acclaim is going to keep trying to go for the trios titles or not but uh i think the house of black are badasses um i think that they definitely work as a group i think everybody just wants to see more of them i think people want to see malachi on a singles run and uh, I don't know if we're going to get that or not, but overall, I thought it was pretty good, uh, pretty good match, and um, nothing, nothing overly exciting. I think this is definitely more of a dynamite type match, but uh, yeah, it was okay. I mean, it's not bad, it's not great. It just, it just was there, right? And then we had Jade and Taya. Uh, I've been pretty happy with Taya's run so far. Uh, I liked her and Jade's build up. I thought this is Jade's best match she's ever had. Um, and I know that's not saying a lot, but I do think that her and Taya did really well. And then Jade ended up winning. And I think that the whole point of like Chris Statlander's return has always been to beat Jade. Like that was her momentum when she, before she got injured, that's where things were heading. 
So anyone that's acting surprised or upset that Chris Statlander's the one to end the streak, like that's what it was supposed to be if you've been paying attention. So uh, yeah, I thought it was a cool surprise. Happy for Statlander. Um, definitely as soon as she came out, I knew Jade was going to lose. And uh, I hope that Statlander can stay healthy and defend the title and kind of be like that Orange Cassidy workhorse for the female division. I think that, that would be really good. And uh, also, I think it's time for Jade to be in the mix of like the the main women's title. So uh, yeah, overall, I was happy with the uh, the performance, and I thought just just overall from Jade facing Taya to Statlander coming out to get the belt, like that's just a good piece of business. That was a really good piece of wrestling business for them, and I enjoyed it. Four pillars match. I mean. And this is another thing. I really think that this was unjustified. Like, I just didn't think that they deserved the heat that they got. Like, people are like, oh, God, these promos are awful. And none of these guys are any good but MJF and blah, blah, blah. Like, dude, Sammy, Jungle Boy, and Darby. I agree they're not that main event type guy where you believe that they could actually beat MJF, but I also believe that they're extremely talented, all three of them, and I knew this match was going to crush. I knew it was going to kill. And I knew that just by putting them in this position, just by allowing them to be in that main event type scenario will elevate them, no matter what, because you'll have to look at them and be like, okay, you know, Jungle Boy at this point, he's been in the main event with MJF and Sammy Guevara and Darby Allen, and he's also faced like Kenny Omega and Cody Rhodes and Chris Jericho, and you can kind of go on the same route for almost all of them, right? They've all faced big names, they've all had big matches, um, and so they've all had titles in the company. So it just made sense to do this. And from what I understand backstage, like MJF was pushing for this. This is what MJF wanted. And it makes a lot of sense in my opinion because I feel like MJF definitely um, wants to help these guys out and really help elevate them as well. So overall, I thought it was a great, great match. Uh, I've enjoyed the buildup. Um, it's not my most favorite or anything, but it's one of those things where like, it's just a fun pay-per-view idea to finally get the four pillars in there for the title. And I thought that they over delivered. I think this is a match of the year candidate. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of cool spots when they all did their mentors, uh, finisher. I thought that was fantastic. And, uh, I mean, just so many crazy transitions from submissions from, aerial moves like everything i just think that this match was awesome and of course mjf finds a way to um weasel his way out of there right i, I just that's just what that guy does so mjf wins and it kind of feels like we're heading to mjf adam cole and i just feel like if, if adam cole gets another title shot he can't lose he has to win so I think it's likely that Adam Cole is going to be champion soon. We have our main event with Anarchy in the arena. This match was awesome. Um, the only thing I really didn't like is the band. I hated the live band, and I was really glad when the Bucks super kicked them. Um, and once things got more in the ring and more settled, things really started to pick up. And, uh, you know, you saw crazy stuff like the exploding super kick from Matt Jackson um, you know, they slammed his foot into thumbtacks. Wheeler Yuta actually had a big role in this match and actually was able to pin Kenny Omega with the help of Takeshita. And I love the heel turn with Takeshita because it makes so much sense because Don has always been talking to him and it's like they just didn't forget about that. It's always built to something. And Don has abandoned Kenny Omega for his new favorite guy, Takeshita. And it just seems like we're really opening the door for Koto Ibushi, which I think is just fantastic. And I'm super excited for the summer that AEW has laid out. I mean, we have Collision coming up, and then we have Forbidden Door, and then we have All In and All Out. And it's just going to be a wild, wild summer. Also, we have the video game coming out. There's just so much right now for AEW. And so this this is my biggest concern also is it it almost feels like make or break. Like, will this company be successful or will it not? 
Um, I'm not saying it's going to go out of business, but like, can it regain the momentum it had in all out 2021 and keep going, keep building off of that? Or have we plateaued? Are we just at a standstill and that's what it will be? Um, overall, I think it's been very successful. I mean, when I went to double or nothing in Vegas in 2019 in my wildest dreams, I never would have imagined what AEW became. Never would have thought that they would have get like CM Punk. Never would have thought they would get Brian Danielson. I mean, those were like pipe dream type guys. And not only did they get them, but I mean, like Brian Danielson's had an incredible run with incredible matches. And guys like Claudio Castagnoli, I mean, like he he has been such a great signing for AEW. Even guys like Jay Lethal, I think, has been really done, done really well for AEW. Like there's just certain people that you wouldn't necessarily like think that they would ever have arrived in the company. And then when they did, it's like, eh, might be mid and they've done really well with whatever they've been given, you know? And then there's some like Andrade that he just hasn't really hit at all. But then there's a guy like Roosh, who I think is an absolute psychotic, violent dude who has a ton of potential and I think that he could be the, what you want Andrade to be. You know what I mean? So I just think that there's so many guys that still are, you know, on the roster that haven't really even been used, which makes Collision super exciting. So overall, like, I thought the pay-per-view was really, uh, it was it was good. Like, I, I give it a 7 out of 10. And my, my main misses, I think the Jericho-Adam Cole match, right? I think the... Uh, the tag match was good, but it wasn't like amazing or anything. I think the women's match between Tony Storm and Hater was just a big disappointment on how it was booked. Um, like I said, there was some goofiness from Arn Anderson uh, and, and, Lu- and Luchasaurus type spot, uh, and then I didn't. They acclaimed and House of Black is all right, nothing fantastic, but like that's all I've got for you in the bad. Like everything else, like this, it was a damn good pay per view, right? So I know that usually there's some AEW pay per views where literally every match is great or good. Um, we didn't have that, so I understand why a little bit of negativity creeps in and then it becomes a freaking pipe bomb of negativity because that's all they can do is they can just find little nitpicks, they can't tear it apart because it's just too good. So, overall, um, really excited for AEW. Happy to be back on YouTube. If you guys don't mind, leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of Double or Nothing. Also, tell me what you th- like thought was the best match of the night. And uh, what are you excited for in the future? I mean, we're getting prob- most likely Will Ospreay, Kenny Omega for Endure uh, in Toronto in the front of like a sold-out crowd. Like That's going to be incredible. Um, there's... There's so much to look forward to, you know. Sounds like CM Punk and Samoa Joe, like that's gonna be awesome. Uh, what what happens with CM Punk? Where where does that lead with the elite? Is it really going to be a hard roster split? Like, there's just a lot of questions that I think we're gonna get answers to, and I'm I'm just really looking forward to everything. So. This is definitely not going to be the last video you hear from me. Um, me and Steven will be back next Tuesday uh, for live rounds. And uh, really looking forward to that and talking to you guys all there. So if you could, leave a like. Uh, s- please subscribe. And uh, I'll keep coming with the content. And uh, thanks, guys. Take care.